Our earliest ancestors knew that survival depended on a combination of brains and brawn. Pamela Young is back from Okayama, where they make a legendary survival tool. Yeah. Thanks, Marissa. Since the Bronze Age, humankind learned the value of using earth, fire, and water in the invention of weapons. One of the greatest motion pictures ever made, Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, gave Westerners their first glimpse of feudal Japanese weaponry. Today, the samurai are gone, but the katana lives on. This is the birth of a new sword, a process that will take up to seven years. Half the certified national treasure katana are made here. We take her, forge it with fire, temper it with water, over and over again until the metal begins to take shape. Then it is polished with eight different kinds of whetstone. Everything is done by hand. For the grip, sword makers go to the sea. This is stingray skin, glued to the hilt and tied with leather or cord for a steadfast grip. The diamond pattern requires hours of meticulous weaving to create a precise symmetry over the stingray skin. An engraver then adorns the blade and scabbard with family crests, scenes of battle or images of plants and animals. Want one? Start saving your yen. The simplest will cost a collector at least a million yen, about $10,000. Each sword has its own look, its own personality. In this art, we preserve our history and our dedication to ancient craftsmanship. And in Okayama, that was a mixed plate, just as gun owners must register in America, sword owners in Japan must register with the government, even though few katana are ever used. Mahalo to Setouchi City and Bizen Osafune Token Village for sharing the work of their artisans. Tomorrow, Oktoberfest in Japan. That's mixed plate on Pamela Young. Thank you, Pam. And she'll have much more from Japan as Mixed Plate presents Season of Gold. That's coming up tomorrow night at 9.30 right here on KHON2.